Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I'm still debating on whether or not we're going to be doing our live stream from out here outdoors. My man E2 Blue will be in the house. We've got our fantasy football draft coming up at 3.30. Man, I am excited. I cannot wait. Uh, this is uh, still trying to get all the bugs out of the system and stuff. So probably we'll at least do the fantasy football draft out here and we'll see how that goes. So last night we watched the Washington football team take on, of course, the Cincinnati Bengals. And um, Washington fans came at me this morning. That I, 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 in fact, love the fact that Washington fans are, are coming after me now. It, it's almost comical because they're trying to say, you know, they played really good against Tampa Bay last week. You know, the, the Cincinnati's a good team, so you're just hating. It's like, okay, all right. If you want to say that Cincinnati, with their backup quarterback, was a great team last night, that they're a Super Bowl contender and yada, 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 then by all means, go ahead and do that. Right now, Today, I'm going to focus in on my fantasy football draft as well as my Dallas Cowboys. So, last night during the broadcast, it was reported that Adam Schefter tweeted out that Dak Prescott may not be 100% all season with this mystery uh, injury to his shoulder slash back. And I wanted to bring this to you guys because this, of course, will affect us and discuss what we actually can take from this telecast if this is legit or if it is something to just kind of blow by the wayside this is uh i would guess continue to classify it as, as limited we'll just continue to the throwing regiment and keep building up the volume so so at this point with this being the last added practice is it fair to say he won't play oh well, there's a good chance he probably won't play that's, that's fair Mike McCarthy saying good chance Dak Prescott doesn't play Saturday in preseason game three for the Cowboys preseason week two. That's one of the things you have to keep straight when a team plays in the Hall of Fame game. I, I don't expect to see Dak Prescott at all in the preseason, Shireen. But this shoulder thing, this lat muscle injury, this thing that has required them to consult with baseball trainers, not football trainers, that's how unusual the injury is. I, I know he's able to throw some, but... And I know he's going to be very, very anxious to play week one of the regular season. Gil Brandt tweeted yesterday that he was at practice on Wednesday and Prescott believes he'll be ready to play against the Buccaneers. I wouldn't expect him to say anything else. If you saw him in the first episode of Hard Knocks, he is very anxious to get back on the field and prove himself and reestablish himself. But you know, this is just a weird, strange injury. And who knows at true. this point very when weird. we're going to see him back very on the strange. field. And who knows if he's not going to just strain it again. That's the thing. We, this is such an unknown for the Cowboys and for anybody who's followed quarterback play to have this kind of weird lower shoulder lat muscle injury. You may think you're fine. You go out there and throw a few passes, and all of a sudden you're not fine all over again. Yeah, Mike, I'm going to the game Saturday. I'm sitting here as we're going through this as you're talking going, why am I going to this game yeah, on Saturday? Remind me again, because Dak Prescott is not going to play. And I do think the Cowboys have to have some concern about this. As you said, how do you know it's not going to act up again? And how do you get ready when you're not throwing that high volume of passes? And they've got to build back up to that. Look, you're, you're facing the defending Super Bowl champions and you're facing them on a Thursday night and your quarterback hasn't played since week five. That was October 11th of last year and he's going to get no preseason work. And, I, you know, so I think this team faces a huge uphill battle for that first game to have Dak Prescott ready to go if he's able to play and have this team ready, this offense ready to ready to play. I just don't know that that's going to happen that quickly for the Cowboys against the Buccaneers. That's a bad draw for them to start out with Dak having this shoulder problem and coming off the ankle injury. And frankly, there's a mental hurdle. I don't care what they say. There's also a mental hurdle of taking off and running again like you did when you hurt that ankle. That was your last play on the field was that run, that compound fracture and dislocated ankle. You've got that mental hurdle of getting over that. Practice isn't a game. It's not the same thing. 
Well, and Sims thinks that the mental hurdle just from the presence of the ankle contributed to the shoulder injury because Sims sees a different throwing motion. It may be he's digging deeper so he doesn't have to put as much pressure on his back foot. He's doing more with his arm than with his base and mm-hmm. that that may have contributed to the injury that he's dealing with. Sims and I talked yesterday, too, about this weird difference between last year and this year. Last year they have Andy Dalton ready to go if Dak can't go. This year it's Garrett Gilbert, Ben DiNucci, Cooper Rush, at least for now. Mm-hmm. And if you do bring in a veteran now, you're getting him up to speed quickly. Why do you think they don't have someone with playing experience, real playing experience, Ooh. behind Dak Prescott? My guess is they didn't want to spend the money, Mike. And when you look at it, they went 6-10 and 10 last season when they had Andy Dalton. And I know Thank he you. missed one game with COVID. He missed one game with that concussion after the Washington game on the illegal hit. I realize he missed a couple games, and you started four quarterbacks last year. Mm-hmm. But Andy Dalton wasn't good. And he's supposed Thank to you. be the veteran quarterback who, who's going to lead you and help you in case Dak gets hurt. You think you have a good team, and you have to have that veteran quarterback behind him. So... I think maybe they threw up their hands and said, all right, well, we're not going to win anyway. We're, we're, we're pretty much lost if Dak Prescott gets hurt again. Surely he's not going to get hurt two years in a row. This is a guy who's been on the field for every single uh, game except last year when he got hurt. So he is on the field all the time. He's always available except when he had the the freak injury last except year. Except when he is So I think they... Except when he is Except when he ends it. So I think they believe that Dak's going to play and he's going to play every single game. And if he if he's not there, they're in trouble anyway. So what difference does it make to go spend big money on a backup quarterback? There you go. I agree with the you idea should. that you only have so many dollars you can devote to your quarterback position. And when you're paying your starting quarterback $40 million per year on a four-year deal that you're going to have to renegotiate after three years and kick it to maybe 47 or $48 million per year, yeah, you don't want to burn cap dollars on his backup. With that said, and to harken back Here to the quarterback competition in Jacksonville, to the extent that the Jaguars are hoping to trade Gardner Minshew, Shereen, his salary for this year is 850 thousand dollars so he is definitely an affordable option if the cowboys <laughs> want to go that route but even if you trade for him Gardner today, minute you? how do you get him up to speed now i'd still go i'd say i'd say trade for him the sunday before the thursday night game and you're better off with him than garrett gilbert ben Danucci or or uh, cooper rush cooper rush. rush cooper rush so many of these backup quarterbacks you can flip their last name and their first name around either that's near, near, here nor there Minshew gardner <laughs> <laughs> would be would be a better option than oh, any of those guys, and uh, I, I I just I feel like at some point the light bulb's got to go off for the organization that we can't go forward with Garrett Gilbert as our quarterback. Um, and I guess you are generally screwed if you don't have your starting quarterback when it's a great starting quarterback. But still, to be completely unprepared. All right, enough of that. Okay, so. Gardner Minichu, let's add him to the list. Of course, with Colin Kaepernick, um, Philip Rivers. And Nick Foles of possible people that the Cowboys that they're recommending. I will say this much because I think about Mike Forello uh, or Furio, however you want to pronounce it. I don't care if you get it right or wrong. This is the same guy who went on, I think, 105 The Fan and said there might be a Des Bryant tape out there that's 10 times worse than Ray Rice which proceeded to start off a whole wire fi- I mean, a wildfire against Des Bryant with everybody looking for a tape that did not exist. In fact, Adam Schefter was brought into the whole situation and asked, what do you know about this tape? And he said, we're spending a lot of resources here and doing an investigation and we will be having a report coming out soon. Still waiting for that report. Still waiting for that tape. So I will say pump the brakes a little bit on this one and wait until we see what we see as far as Dak Prescott goes. This sounds like great talk, of course, for uh, television and things, but um, I'll also add to this that, uh, in fact, there'll be another video later on because I want to look at the comparisons of Tony Romo because everybody wrote off Tony Romo in the beginning of the 2014 season after having surgery for a ruptured disc where they literally took his disc out and I think that season actually worked out pretty good for the Dallas Cowboys and Tony Romo as well so I'm just putting out here what is being reported by the talking heads out there 
Adam Schefter. It's one of those things that definitely gets you to check it out and see how the interest is on it and so forth. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just say, let's wait and see. And as far as signing Gardner Minichu, he even touched on my biggest thing with this is Gardner Minichu, sorry, he doesn't know your system, which you are now on the tail end of it from this game forward after tomorrow night you start planning for the tampa bay buccaneers all the installs are done you start tomorrow looking at who's going to be cut on this roster there is not enough practice time to take somebody who does not know your system and think that you're going to be able to do all of the calls and all of the system that you have with all of your receivers garrett gilbert may not be as good a passer as Gardner Minichu, but I actually dare say, you know what, Gardner Minichu actually played a decent game for us. One of the best non dak games that we had last year. I dare say, I actually wanted Gar uh, my man Garrett Gilbert to continue starting for the rest of the season because I looked at Andy Dalton being a guy who was going to go. Uh, Gardner, uh, Gardner now, now you got me saying Gardner Minichu, but Garrett Gilbert being a guy who you try and bring up the speed for the future because his price tag would be uh, cost effective and getting him to learn your system. You know, we've gone through with the Matt Castles before where we said, we need a quarterback and we grabbed Matt Castle. And Matt Castle was the victor of one game. And I won't even credit Matt Castle. I will credit uh, Deshaun Jackson for running backwards on a punt and fumbling on the six yard line in time for the Dallas Cowboys to kick a field goal to win. We ended up getting Brandon Wheaton, who was another veteran quarterback who didn't bust a grape for us. So thinking that we can just go out and just find somebody that we can plug in and instantly they're going to do better is not the case. For the Cowboys, you start off the season running the football and letting Dak's shoulder get up to speed, let him get into a rhythm and get into a groove. The best friend for an offense and a defense is a good running game with that being said i hope uh, uh leave me a comment down in here because I'm, I'm still playing with the system and trying to make sure that it's right and i want to make sure we're good before uh tonight's live stream if we do it from outside here and again you know there's so many different things i got the podcaster set here and trying to set it up for each different type of microphone does take a bit of work and forgive me but i'll get it straight but as always guys i appreciate you our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report.